Hey mate, welcome if you're new. My name is Dami. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my financial goals for 2024 and how I'm going to achieve it. If this is something that interests you, please ensure to click on the subscribe button, stay tuned and keep watching. was not a good year financially for me because oftentimes I'm not I lost track of my spending and I just found myself buying things I necessarily do not need and one lesson I took out of that was the fact that I did not have a goal I did not have a finance goal and when I said I did not have a finance goal was if I go back in time in 2020 2021 2022 our goal was to like as a family to buy a house so we had a goal we had an idea of the amount we needed, so we're saving towards that project. And in 2023, I came in without any specific goal. I wanted to have savings for the sake of having it. So that did not put me under any pressure whatsoever. I realized that I was just spending money. I came and then I'll console myself with, mm, you only live once. At the end of the day, you only live once, right? So that was the life I lived in 2023 and that is not going to repeat itself in 2024. So what I've done is I now have something I'm saving towards as against just saving or I'm just saving for the sake of saving. You know, some people do it and it works for them. But for me, if I don't have any anything I'm saving towards I just like I can always go into the savings pull it out and spend the money when I was saving for the house bro once I take my savings out of my salary you cannot get the money out of me there's nothing God forbid any family emergency but when I was saving towards something I was very strict very disciplined in setting this goal for 2024 we are going to be using the word SMART so SMART is a popular acronym you must have heard before which is used in goal setting so what does it stand for S is for specific, M is for measurable, A is for achievable, R is for relevant, and T, your goal must be time bound. In 2024, I'm looking at three specific goals. One, I want to save for savings. Two, I want to save for emergency funds. And three, I want to save for investments. So for my savings, right, in the past, like in 2023 specifically, I was just saving to have savings. But now there are specific things I want to get myself at different points in time during the year that I need to save towards. There are things that I cannot just buy once from maybe my monthly salary. I need to save. For, let's say, for instance, I need to buy a car. I've been using my current car since 2019, I think, or 2020 when I got it, when we came in here. And I'm at the point where I want to change my car. So I'm like, okay, I need to save for this. It's not something I can just pick up this next morning and go and pick up from the dealership. I need to save at least down payments, whatever um, route I want to go. So that is one of the things I'm saving for. And then the other thing is I want to go on vacation. I want to, like, you know, I need to go on vacation. I don't just want to wake up one day like, oh, see, there's tickets on sale. Let's buy tickets. Let's buy. Because what I realized this year is tickets was cheap, right? But the cost of a vacation requires proper planning. Like, the cost of tickets was even cheaper than the other relative cost we had to spend on vacation when we went to London. So this year, I'm going to... Since I know that family vacation is something we want to incorporate in our lifestyle as a family, I'm going to be setting specific goals. Oh, this month we want to go to this country. This is how much we need. This is what we need for hotel savings. Hotel, um, this is what we need for hotel spends and stuff like that. So I'm going to be saving towards those goals. Those are just samples of the goals I have for my savings. The next goal is emergency fund. With the uncertainty that is fueled in this world at the moment, this is not just an Australian thing or a Nigerian thing. The entire world is currently filled with uncertainty if you're on social media especially tiktok you see a lot of people from day to day they are posting how i lost my job i lost my job i lost my job and this is something that can happen to anybody it's not something you wish or pray for but it can actually happen to anybody like you know so i'm at the point where i'm like yes i need to have emergency funds and emergency funds is not necessarily for loss of job it's also for god forbid any health issues like this is our body we do and that's why it's important to take care of your body take care of your health but anything can happen to anybody at any freaking time is not planned so i'm saving for god forbid any type of emergency be it job loss be it health wise be it family needs anything and what i've learned in recent times is you need to have at least 
three months your full-time salary in your account so I'm um, like god forbid if anything happens to my job what happens to me you know I have bills to pay I have mortgage to pay so I have a goal to save at least three months my monthly salary this year and then the other thing is to have my investment goals I want to have different investment portfolio I know my husband and myself were working towards one as a family I'm going to be doing that one with him so I'm saving for that and also personally I want to start all this small investments buying stock and you know there are things um i know i said i'll talk me about it this year but i'm going to start with 500 dollars and because i'm a newbie in this type of investment especially with shares back in nigeria my dad used to help me and he would manage all of that for me but now in australia i'm still a newbie in this um, territory so i'm just going to play it safe and just use the combank comsec shares i think that's what it's called i will try and buy 500 dollars and see how that goes and then i can start different portfolios and um, stuff like that so that's about my goals for this year so those are my financial goals at the end of the year i'm hoping to at least be able to save let's say 20 percent of my annual salary and some of this will be split across the three goals i've mentioned so to achieve this goal the very important thing i think i believe which i've always done is budgeting i have a spreadsheet i've used over the years and this spreadsheet i will try to also put it up is splitted like what my starting point is usually how much is my salary so once i put in my salary i then break down my expenses to the last t up until netflix how much is netflix but one thing that is different for me this year is there are times where i'm in budget deficits i hardly have any time where i'm in budget surplus so i'm in budget deficit and at the moment i'm thinking of exploring other means of making additional income i personally want to try out either doordash or uber eats my husband is still hasn't approved as of the time of filming this video but i'm trying to convince him like i really want to do it because there are months i'm in budget deficit and i feel like i can just do those tiny things and quickly make extra money and cover up like on saturdays i really want to put my saturdays into good use hobby is home with the kids most saturdays i can just you know drive uber eats drive doordash around the neighborhood make some cool cash so that's one thing i am going to strongly do maybe not in january because it's busy season at work and i'm not going to be working my past half but as things get easier and settle in i want to try doordash and uber it and yes i'm also going to put in more effort on my tiktok and see if i can get brand deals and make some money and when i'm talking of um, budget deficit i'm not talking big dollars i'm not talking budget deficit that in a month i'm looking for additional one thousand dollars i'm talking budget deficit of two hundred dollars three hundred dollars four hundred dollars i think the max i have in a month is five hundred dollars and i really believe it is achievable it is something i can get other sources of income to cover up so that's where i'm saying but by the, by the time your budget deficit is huge that already is is an issue is an issue with your budget itself one thing i'm taking seriously this year again is my tightening as soon as because before now what i did as soon as my salary comes in i will take out my savings so this time i will continue doing that take out my savings and i'm not going to touch it and yeah i'm going to take out my savings and i'm going to take out my tights i'm a christian and i believe so much in tightening i'm going to take out my tights because last year oh god is what it is anyway it's gone so i'm going to take tightening very seriously this year god helping me <laughs> so yeah those are the two things i'm going to work on and yeah my budget is just around my salary with tiny um deficits i need to make up for and i think i can do it also once i set my budget one thing i'll be doing is tracking my expenses i did well with this maybe in the first quarter of 2023 but i fell down along the line like i said i'm going to be tracking my expenses to the last t also the things i'm buying one lesson i learned in 2023 is i don't trust my children and you say why these kids today they love the snacks they're eating it so much they eat it so much that i'm like oh they really love it let me go and get three bucks of these snacks i'm no longer doing that because what i've realized is you buy it today they like it today tomorrow they're like they're just over it and they're like oh mommy we don't like it again so i feel like we spend so much money buying things we do not need also another thing i would think would help me and us as a family is trying to shop online you know when you shop online you're just looking for the items you actually need it's difficult for you to start scouting through all of Kohl's online store to look for items you're just searching for the things you need 
so i feel like i can do if i can do click and collect some of the stores it will help me a lot from wandering through the storehouse and saying oh i like this this might be good and spending unnecessary money so that's one thing i'm also wanting to try out also aldi does not have an online store so with Audi, I'll still need to go into the store, but I'll let you guys in on how this plays out. With, so with the SMART acronym, we've talked about specific. So the specific things I'm saving for, I've said here, the specific, um, the savings, my emergency fund, my investment, and of course, you know, pay my bills, definitely. That's one of my money goals in 2020 for me. Things not be so hard, I cannot pay my bills. So that's it. And when I'm budgeting, one thing, yeah, one thing I do when I'm budgeting is I holistically look at all my expense, include like to the tiny details. I'm like, oh, in in July this year, my my sister is going to be thirty, my husband is going to be, you know, like all their birthdays, what age, like yeah, how detailed it is. Is how old is this person going to be? What gift am I going to buy? I've done all of the all of this at the beginning of the year, so there are no surprises. And I'm not saying there are no instances where there are surprises. There are instances where I don't know something and something just pops up, which is perfectly fine. At every month i also budgeted a certain amount of money for myself to just like upkeep for myself and it's not every month i spend this money so those monies i can put into good use like even gifting people for things i did not know about or helping people is just just anything whatsoever up until my december plans my christmas gifts it's all planned out at the beginning of the year my goals are easily measurable because I have a saving goal for each month to be able to get the result I want at the end of the year. So by the time I'm looking at my accounts and the end of a month, I should I know how much I should be seeing there and I can measure that easily. Are these goals achievable? Yes, I would say they are. Despite having some budget deficits, I believe that some of these goals are things I can meet up with. If I get to any point where I feel like I cannot get the extra income from either DoorDash or Uber Eats or even from brand deals as I expect or project what I would do is to cut down some of my expenses and one is like my personal allowance that I allocated to myself each month I would have to cut down on those and once I'm able to do that I'm able to achieve those goals and are they relevant man not with the uncertainty that is filled with the old nation and the country now they are relevant like but I need to get my finances together like um, last year I feel like I stressed so much about money and I don't want that happening in 2024 I want to live a life of financial freedom and I want to get to December 2024 I'm like girl you did it like that's the goal that's the main goal girl you did it and you know I don't want to be filled with fear if things go wrong is life like things happen you know what I mean so they are very very relevant and then of course they are time bound I've been able to split it um, monthly and I'll be tracking my expenses monthly as well to just see how I'm going and see what I need to do better tracking my expenses if there's anything I need to cut off things I need to hard back so some of the tips that have worked for me is bulk purchase of food items that we eat as a family so I bought my protein in bulk I bought palm oil in bulk like things that I know that they are regular household staples I buy in bulk, not skit snacks, right? So that is it. And there are certain things I won't be buying in 2024 because I just have them in excess and I feel like it's a lot, it's a waste of money. They are just bad money habits that I've indulged over time. Number one, I'm not going to be buying biro. You think as simple as it sounds, oh, how much is biro? But by the time you calculate how much biro and pens I buy anytime I go to Kmart, like it's a lot. So I'm not going to be buying biro or pen in 2024. I'm not going to be buying diary, God, diary planner, and all of those things. I'm not buying it in 2024. I have bought a lot. Like, cheese, what am I writing? And in this day and age where people have iPads, they use for planner, or they even use their phone. I'm still a paper pen girl, but do I have enough to see me through 2024? Yes, I do. So I'm not going to be buying any planner or diary in 2024. If you want to give it, if you want to gift me, of course I'll take it. But buying it, no, I'm not buying any diary or planner. The other thing I'm not going to be buying in 2024 is perfumes. 
gosh this one i'm just praying i'm able to hopefully i go travel because when i travel i'm tempted to buy perfumes at duty free or even when they start doing black friday sales but that's still long in november maybe i will have a miracle morning and some of these things i'm saying is i'm not buying them because they are not in my budget if i get them for free oh it's fine or if i have an excess money that i'm not using like just excess free money which is rare i can buy it but based on my current budget they don't fit in so by, we've talked about Biro Diary Planner, we've talked about um, lunchbox. Lunchboxes, gosh, we have a ton. Like there are some we did not even use in 2023. So tell me why I'm buying a new food warmer or a food flax for my kids. So we're not buying new lunch boxes. Lunch bag, we are not buying. Whatever we have is what we're going to use throughout 2024 so that we can all live a life free of financial stress so yes those are the things i won't be buying biro diary planner perfume and lunch boxes that is everything i've gathered for now as the months go by there are things i'm going to be adding most likely i won't be buying any home decor item this 2024 i'm taking a break but we'll see we'll see but I think home decor should actually go on that list as well. But when I say home decor, that's not home organization items. Like I still have a few places to organize. My garage is still a mess. But with that said, that's everything about this video. Similar to last year as well, I'll be sharing my monthly expenses from time to time as time permits me but even when i don't share best believe i'm tracking my expenses like that is one goal i have for myself this year sitting down tracking my expenses and reviewing the items i buy from time to time to see what we can take off and what we need to bring in so far it's cost saving so thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up continue the conversation in the comment section if you have any question please drop it in i'll be more than pleased to respond to those and if you're yet to subscribe please don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this thank you guys so much for watching i will see you in my next video bye